Behind these images are stories. Stories that are unique to each individual, but an outcome that is common to many. That is, being faced with the situation of no resources to provide the security of food and shelter. We share the inspiring stories of individuals whose lives have been transformed through proactive measures undertaken by the government, reflecting the promise of hope and the power of collective action. My story started back in 2019 when I was on my feet, having my own apartment, my car, and working while going to school. I was doing fine until COVID happened. I lost my job and I was at home for a bit of time trying to source some of that job. Um, but I had a bit of difficulty trying to find um, additional jobs due to the fact that I didn't have really my documentations because they were destroyed. When COVID happened, I was at my job which restructured so I had to gain different employment. It took me a while to get some employment but my new employment couldn't cover my bills. I got really depressed and I ended up in the hospital where I received some treatment for my depression. I was walking on the street after being kicked out. Eventually a gentleman um, saw me on the street. He listened to my story and advised me to go like to the police station. And then they eventually um, brought me to the shelter. Being homeless is a frightening and life-changing experience, but the bright side is knowing that help is available. For many, like Miss X and Mr. B, they're able to access the services of the Poor Relief Department. It's an agency of the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development that has responsibility to assist the destitute and alleviate poverty at the parish level. The Poor Relief Department provides several programs that are offered through the 13 municipal corporations across the island. Among them are night shelters and drop-in centers to cater to a growing homeless and destitute population. The shelter has come in handy for me on a daily basis because a lot of times I don't have a meal or a place to shower or, you know, uh, change your clothes. The homeless and the mentally challenged, as well as the destitute poor, they are able to come in, have a bath, change of clothing. Sometimes we do a bit of counseling. Sometimes they just need somebody to talk to. So they will come in and talk to us. They are able to get breakfast, lunch, and of course, supper. When persons come to be groomed, the person, personnel from the health center will come and on the same day would give them their medication on spot. There is also the Desmond McKenzie Transitional Center for the Homeless. The objective of the center is to reduce homelessness across the municipality. It's also to empower our service users through motivational strategies. It's also to reintegrate individuals back into society and to restore normalcy. Then we try to get these individuals to set goals and when they set these goals, we monitor them. We monitor them, we assist them, we liaison with other agencies, other stakeholders. It is these and other services being offered that continue to make a significant impact on the lives of the clients being served through the Poor Relief Program. The shelter was really impactful on me due to the fact that one, it had allowed me to have somewhere to sleep, that's one. Additionally, it also helped in assisting me to you know, figure out my next steps and my plans and you know, create some short-term growth in order to um, achieve what I want to achieve, which is you know, pretty much independence for myself, just to be able to survive and function like a regular person. I'm really grateful for the Desmond McKenzie Transitional Center for the Homeless because when I was at my worst, 
I got safety and protection while being, you know, fed and supported. When I came here, I was almost finished with school and I got supported by the staff here and also I gained different employment. They advised me of like the jobs here um, in the area and, you know, I um, eventually landed a job. They um, assisted me with bus fares and when I come home from work, there's always, you know, food um, saved for me. So it has really impacted me um, in a way where I would say that it's beneficial in terms of helping me get back on my feet. And there are others across municipalities with similar stories of achievements. So in terms of success stories, we have two persons who went through the hard NSTA empowerment program and was successful. And at the moment, we have four persons lined up who are waiting to be processed. They are waiting on their identification since that is a requirement of the program. Also, there are two persons who have been rehabilitated and has come back out in society and is living on their own and is functioning in a normal way. I would say that this is a great move for Jamaica because most people who find themselves in difficult situations, they just need that extra bit of support so that they can get on with life. I don't have the things that I have before, but I'm feeling very positive that soon I will because now I'm finished school and I am gainfully employed. So I'm looking forward to the future much more than I would have before being in my state of depression. And so the charge to persons who are at their lowest, with no income, no support, no food, no shelter. Don't get lost in the mental aspect of things. Finding someone that you can talk to where you can create a game plan and how to recover as opposed to just sitting down and thinking the worst. I would say don't be ashamed of your situation. There are several places where you can get shelter and provision while you're down to get back up. Remember this place is about transition and so they don't want to see you down for too long. So any supportive services they can offer, they will. Through the government's unwavering commitment, we've witnessed how policies, support systems, and community-driven efforts are indeed reshaping lives and providing a beacon of hope for those struggling with homelessness. This serves as a reminder that when we unite under a common goal and extend our hands to those in need, transformative shifts occur. Together, we can continue to build a society where every individual finds the opportunity and support to reclaim their lives, fostering a nation where no one is left behind.